Hi, I'm Drew Hutchison. You're tuned to Local Bias. We come to you from the studios of Greenfield Community Television at 393 Main Street in Greenfield. And this is the summer of 2021. I have six special guests this summer. I've already interviewed two of them, Paul Richmond, local poet, and Carl Meyer, an environmental journalist who um, reports on the Connecticut River. And today, it's my great pleasure to have an old friend but not really an old, not old, old, but just a friend who I've been friends with for a long time. Let's get that straight. You're not old. Robin Lane. Robin, I'm sorry I called you old. What, I, uh, what do you mean? I am. You're, well, you're older than me. Well, you know, things happen in life. Yeah, so tell me what's going on in life. Where should I look? You don't look, look at me. We're having a conversation. Oh, oh I remember okay. you so from you're the looking old at me, days. Except for you, you, th you were saying, didn't you have a mustache or something? I had a whole no, goatee. No, didn't you have a something? I had a whole goatee for like 20 years. But I've seen you like this. Very handsome. Oh, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I'm looking at you. You're so looking at me. So we're having a conversation, and the cameras are rolling, and people are kind of, but there's they're no voyeurs. But camera over there. There's, well, that's because that's, they got it worked out. All right. Okay, right. they know okay. what they're doing in the control room. Uh, okay. And um, at least I believe they know what they're doing in the control room. I'm certain that um, I know what I'm doing. Okay, and I know what I'm doing, so go Okay, ahead. so what are you doing, Robin? You ask, you, what are no, you no, doing? No, no, what are you doing? <laughs> Okay, what I'm doing is living. Okay, we but you can't, so all right. Okay, wait. <laughs> you were in L.A., and then it's like you disappeared from my life for a I while. I disappeared. I was in prison in L.A., and I won't go into that because it was okay. just the most painful thing in the so entire So you broke world. out of prison. Broke out of prison. <laughs> I'm serious. I wasn't really in prison, but I was imprisoned. Um, broke out of that, came back, and voila, COVID. And you're living La Vida Loca in lockdown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I saw one of your concerts that you did. Live? It was excellent. Oh, thank you. It just... came, the audio was really good. Oh, was it just me and me? Yes, or... it was just okay. you. Hmm. It, it was, um, you sounded great. Thank you, thank you. Um, and you're actually okay. staying wicked busy with music these days, I take it. Well, yeah, well, I still, you know, I think COVID really helped a lot of people being in that situation that, uh, you, you had to get busy in another way, or maybe do your life, whereas you hadn't done it before because you were always going to work and, you know, having to do this and that outside of your home. So I think it really benefited. Like almost one of my friends says, COVID for the cure. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say that because... Well, I mean, the fact it, is 600,000 Americans have died. But it could come died. back. Yeah, I know. And the, the, the Delta variant, it's scary. It's so but scary. But so, I loved being cooped up. Because it forced me to be more creative, and I'm a creative did you, person. Did you get rid of a lot of things? Did you clean your closets and clean? Well, I mean, I, get you things, know what? I went through a divorce, you know? and amazingly enough... Right then? Uh, oh, you, amazingly enough, you have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like when you move out of a huge house into a tiny apartment, you have to kind of decide, well, what's important? And what I, what's important to me is uh, my, my musical instruments and my cooking implements oh. and my art supplies. And that's it, and, and how fun. Yeah. And, and so I, you had it all, and you could do that. And my children and are with me half the time, and so it's... It, but the, the thing is, I downsized, and then COVID hit, and I was stuck in this tiny little apartment for about a year where I hardly saw anybody other than my children half the time. Oh, my gosh. And I loved it because well, I... Well, I took walks. Did I hardly, you take walks? I didn't even take hardly any walks. I just mostly um, sat there and thought about stuff and, mm -hmm. and, and painted and played music. I practiced my bass every day. I, okay, yeah. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I started... Um, well, I met this guy. I, put, I always put everything on Facebook, like, what kind of spider is this, you right, know, or whatever. Right. So um, I asked if anybody knew how to fix or help me organize... Um, my windows, my desktop. Oh, okay, I, I, your computer stuff. Yeah, yeah. And this guy answered, and he happened to have moved to Holly. So meeting him helped me figure out that maybe I could do a Patreon right. site, page. What do you call that? That is Patreon. Patreon. Yeah. yeah, do a Patreon. Right. What? A fundraiser? No, or a fund no. It's not, fun it's not raising funds because of Patreon. It's, it's a monthly yeah, they, they artist pay me. support of... It's support for artists. Patrons. Basically. People become my patrons and pay me, and they can pay, you know, the lowest tier is $3. Is it like $3 a month or something? Yeah, or? $3 a month. It comes out of their whatever, 5 or 10 and then you get different things depending on the it's, tier it's, you're on. So my, so my issue with that is that Fine. I know thousands if, or maybe <clears throat> hundreds 
but being, probably thousands of musicians who are like so, having such a hard time making any money playing music. Yeah, and it's hard to decide. And I love your music, and you're. you're I mean, I've always admired. Adore you. I adore you, Robin. Um, but I didn't sign up to give you money because it's like I'm barely making ends meet, and that's oh, musicians are poor. Oh, generally. <clears throat> I know, and that's why I started the Patreon thing. But I wouldn't exactly say I'm getting rich from it yet. Right. But. I want to keep going with it and um, creating content. Figuring well, like the content, I can just you know, yeah, I put it on and people will always like it and love it and right. stuff. Um, I put on you know music, old shows, new shows, um, talk my, from my book, you know, right. and they'll write things and. So you, you know, did. Whatever. So you wrote a book. I remember you were writing a book. I was I writing a book. Okay, so you're still in, you're still writing it, or was it ever I'm published? Oh yeah, no, I'm still. Okay, writing so it hasn't been published. No, and it's really... How can it ever end, though? Your life keeps going on and on in interesting ways. <laughs> oh, boy, good. You're right about that. How could it ever end? And the thing about writing a book, I guess real authors, I don't consider myself a real author. I just write things that I've done. Um, how can they do that alone? It's so lonely. So you have to, like, for me, it's lonely to do it alone. And if I'm how? talking about myself, mm -hmm. writing about myself, that's hard because then you're living in those old places, you know, the th where things happen that weren't necessarily fun things. Right. Well, your movie hinted at some things in your childhood, yeah. and um, I didn't haven't even gotten into that yet in the right. So I'm so I'm going back and examining your life. But the thing is, is that don't we grow from our difficult experiences? Can't we, in a way? By going back and looking at something, but I've already and, done that. And okay, but with it, a therapist. It, oh. <laughs> I mean, and, and you do it alone too, but right. like it's just like. But eventually, you have to forgive and let go. Yeah. Because but, then that but, frees but you. But what does that have to do with writing about that stuff? Well, because you're you're you going back what? and you're examining. I, maybe it I'm again. like lying or something because I laugh. I'm really laughing sometimes, I and mean, especially when I was someone was helping me write the book and they were there all the time, I would tell these stories and I'd be writing it down. She'd like kind of go, she goes, how could that have happened? You know, how, like knowing Bobby Busillet and his white dog and then looking him up in San Quentin and he's like, <laughs> he has white dog music. Bobby Busillet, the one no that started idea. the whole Charles Manson. Oh thing. my, really? You know, yeah, like, and then there's one story after the next of things like that. That you know, just happened to. So really, that is so funny. Not funny about what happened, but that he is in prison and has a recording studio in prison, and he did the music for a movie called Lucifer Rising by Kenneth Anger. Do you know this? I stuff? know nothing. I'm so ignorant. <laughs> but you, well, anyway, is the music any good? I don't, I don't think I've listened to it. Really. Okay, and that's the other question. It's something that my friend Sean and I talk about a lot, is that if there is a musician who puts out great music, but you can't stand their politics. Oh my God. How oh, their you, politics? Yeah, or, the their, or, or, who or, they, or things they have done, or they're, maybe they're just a jerk. Just what if they're a jerk? There, there was somebody that was a jerk I never listened to. She was always rude to me, and I'm not going to tell you who it is. Right, no, we, we're not. But the, but the thing is, is that at what but point really does, is the, does the music transcend the person? We are all so flawed. Uh, uh, um, I don't want to ask any hard questions, Robin. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> no. Do you talk about politics in here? You can. Yes. It's a cable access. But, okay, you can. You can even swear. You know that Ted Nugent. Yeah. Okay. But his I, music's awful, so I don't care. Right. Okay. So whose music? Who? Who has music that? You okay. Like so that, so for instance, um, I love Beck. I but love he's Beck. A, but he, apparently he, his parents were Scientologists. But, oh, yeah. And I thought he was yeah. raised as one. And the Scientologists harassed my family when I was growing up. Uh, so I don't like them. Yeah. Um, but I, but love, I don't think but I don't, I, he's like, well, now, I've, 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 since then I found out I he's, not, people he's not necessarily a practicing Scientologist. I mean, just because your parents or one parent was involved. But there was I had that issue. It's like, does he believe this? Is he in a cult? And I can ask my friends. Well, the thing is, is that I, I, what I realize is I love his music. I'm going to listen to his music. Oh, my God, he's such a genius. He is such a genius. He inspires me the way very few artists do. Oh, my God, he's a genius. All the textures that he uses and the way Who that he can else? reinvent his PJ sound. PJ Harvey. Do you know her? That, that's an old name. When, what was... Oh, she's I mean, they really someone cute. else. Who uh, is she? You were thinking... PJ, somebody or other who wrote That's right. <laughs> um, The Eve of Destruction or something like that in Barry, Barry McGuire. McGuire. No, but I, I think yeah. this guy 
wrote it. PJ, PJ. I don't know. Anyway, so who's PJ Harvey? You don't know PJ no, Harvey? No, I know nothing. Oh my God. Well, okay, maybe we can just leave PJ. People look it up and let's move on with our conversation. We're running out of time. Robin. All right. So you're playing music these days with a whole wait, band wait, of wait, critters. Wait, wait. There was something interesting. That I'm was sure there was. I okay, asked you the question right. about should Why you... does this only go on for a half an hour? That's ridiculous. Because people don't have an attention span longer than... Oh, that's than... true. But for us? Even for us, Robin. Mm -hmm. Especially if we're all over the place. We've got to stick to the topic. So the question okay. was about, do you separate the person's music from who they are? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, mm, if Beck was, like, you know, that way, um... I'd have to think twice, but I don't know. Yeah, you, I don't know. And don't you, but Austin, Austin I mean, I for instance, that. I love Suzanne that. Vega. Yeah. And I don't know anything about her politics, and I generally don't care that much about lyrics. Okay. But when I listen to her lyrics and I listen to her songs, I She's just have great, to feel yeah. that I love, that I have to feel that I love her as a person. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, I, Beck, you, you wouldn't know if you I loved him as a person. I wouldn't know, because it's, it's like. It, Except he's so cute and little and whatever. And he's one of those L.A. kids. He grew up oh, in the same kind God. of environment that you did, right? He's no, a Laurel different. Canyon. Weren't you Laurel well, Canyon? Well, he, he, he and Allison Anders, do you know her? She's no. a director. Um, her daughter, and I met them in L.A., and they grew up together. But they, like, no, I think he, like Highland Park area. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. But they, you know, the, kid, the parents weren't there. Right. They were there, but the ki your kids can do anything. Right. Though that's how it was when I was a kid. We would come home when it got dark. Not that I grew up in L.A., I grew up in Florida, but still, we would be gone most of the day during the summer. You don't come home until it's dinner time. And then you could hear, it's dinner time! <laughs> ding, 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 ding! Come on home! Is that how they talk? Well, I grew up in the South. So that's yes. how your parents talk? Well, that's what well, my... your granny? My, no, well, yes, certainly, my granny. You mean, was she um, Mima? No, because that's, I think, a Polish... <laughs> No, it's not. Mima it's like Holmes? Alabama, Mississippi. It was Grandma. Grandma Thelma. Oh, Thelma Grandma May. Thelma. Hey, my mother was born in Selma. But she wasn't born <laughs> in, in Selma. No, she was born in Louisville. Okay. Louisville, Kentucky? Yeah. Well, hello. Well, there might be other Louisvilles. There was no other so I think of you as such an L.A. Louisville. product of L.A. in a way. A child no, who grew my up mother in that. was born in Louisville, and then they moved to Detroit, and she grew up in Detroit. Okay, so, so you have a backstory that even I don't know about. Then she went to New York and she was a model. Okay, and then... You never saw, I never showed you her pictures? You did show me a picture of her and I thought she was a babe. Well, you know, there was the other one, offspring of an asshole. That that's one. right, <laughs> right. I think that's still actually up on YouTube. Maybe it's not. Might have taken it down. Really? Did you put it on YouTube? Way back Holy in the day. Holy... Yeah. Jiminy Crickets. Yeah, and then it never actually really was completed as a tune. It was no, just the start of an idea. No, but it was no, no, great. no. It was. It, you I made think, it into a song. Yeah, I, mean, I can't remember it or anything, but yeah, it had a couple of verses. Well, it had yes. two, yeah, it had rise up, fly again, or wait a second, I don't can't remember. Um, I, I would have to look at it again. <laughs> the other one that I, I have, I made a clip of, was when we played ten years ago at the Energy Park for my fiftieth birthday. And um, we did the song that you and Steve and I were working on about the hole in the ozone layer. Oh, no, I was singing that to myself the other day. You were? There's a hole. There was a hole, hole in the oh, ozone. It's getting better, better all the time. time. Right. Anyway, I I'll send you I read it in a magazine. You. I read it in a magazine. Right. I'll, I'll send you that so you can see how, how we played it. How did start out, though? Um, I'll Sorry, people, if you don't like our conversation. It's, it's like you had to be there, right? No, but you have to love us to love this. Okay, so let's move on to something that, they, okay. that doesn't require them to love okay. us. Okay, okay but something to love the topic at hand. Okay. So as, as a musician and a lifelong musician, I mean, you've, been, you've, been, you've known that you were a singer. Well, I knew I was a singer from, that's all I ever wanted to be. Right, and then you've when also- When I grew up. Right, but you obviously, you're an excellent guitar player. You understand chordal structure. You're a craftsman, you write tunes. You teach a lot of other people how to write songs with your sure. songbird sings. Mm -hmm. um, but as an artist yourself, as a creative person yourself, are you branching out still? Are you still growing? I hope so. Okay, what do you do? Yeah. To, so what do you do to, to force that growth? Because I don't force it. You just, it just happens. It either happens or it doesn't. I mean, you know, you get inspired by things. Like I, I have a song now called Why, but um, why, why do we have two eyes? 
And the whole song is like that. It goes on like about, you is know, why do we have a body? Is this your granddaughter brought this, no. inspired this? No, th this is a weird song. And I use all these really weird pedals to make it go like, eh, eh, eh. and um, it's very cool, I think. Is that on your latest release? No, or that you... was written after. I've got all these new songs that, which took us so long. I made an album called Dirt Road to Heaven. It'll be out in a couple months, probably. Um, and it's taken years because the studio's in Marblehead. And my friend, you know, he, he hasn't charged me for using the studio, so, and he plays bass, and I'm always, I can tell him what to do. It sounds like, like the, don't play the bass like that, play it like this. So this is what you need to tell him to do. Move out here and build your studio out here. No, <laughs> no. Marblehead's nice to visit, though. Well, yeah, very white, and, you know, I think that's the way it goes. It, well, it's, it's, it's yeah. Um, Wait, Marblehead is a quaint drinking town with a boating problem. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went lobstering off of Marblehead at uh -huh. five o'clock in the morning once years ago. I was visiting uh -huh. my friend Mandy and Martin, and Martin's dad was a lobster man, and he had his. Uh, uh, you went on the boat. I went on the boat, and Did you uh, dive down, or you? No, they were just hauling up traps. Uh -huh. And the thing is, is I wasn't feeling that good. The water was kind of choppy, and I just went down in the cabin and laid down and took a nap because I just wasn't feeling good. And that's kind of like a precursor to seasickness, probably. So that's my lobster <laughs> that's experience. That's the most random thing that came out of you. Well, you mentioned Marblehead. I had a Marblehead okay. story, okay? Right. That's what All people right. do. They oh, share, okay. oh, remember the time that I... <laughs> oh, yeah, I got one. I got a better story than that. I, I saw What about the guy that got swallowed by a whale? That is amazing. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know if you want to bring the Bible into this. I mean... Oh, why? I'm kidding. Jonah and the whale. Oh, that one. Or you want to talk about Pinocchio instead? Oh. No, there was a guy that actually did get swallowed by a whale. It was in the news about a month they, ago or so. People know that. You right. all know well, that. Well, do they know that? There was an actual why person swallowed. Why wouldn't they know that? Because and if they, you don't know it, look it up because it's unbelievable. He got swallowed by a whale. And, and then, survived. And Oh, yeah, he's alive. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was on Sony's show. Jimmy Kimmel or something had him on the show and he was in it, being interviewed by Jimmy Kimmel in the shark's mouth, you know, fake shark. Right. But that, but that, the fact that there are some people who don't know that that happened. Really? And that, I have to imagine. And, but that points to another larger issue, Robin. Okay. We no longer have three channels of TV that we all watch the same shows and we all have like a culture, even if it's fake, a common culture. Now everybody has their, you know, their seven internet channels they go to and their whatever, and they, Seven? Their, oh, and well, the average the person only visits so many websites, okay. and they tend to go to they go back to the same ones that tell them what they already want to know, <laughs> and that's yeah. one reason why we're not connecting across the aisle with people that we disagree with, because they're not even tuning into us, and they're and we're not tuning into them. Oh, but that's music so can break through. Music can traditionally break music has. You know, Joe Strummer could say things about politics that maybe his dad couldn't say. Yeah. Right, exactly. So, His dad was a something, right? He was an ambassador, I think. Mm. Or something. Yeah. I mean, I know a it was something. something. It had quotation marks, whatever it was. Um, yeah, I agree. That's uh, music. And, you know, when I was first growing up in the hippie, hippie era, I mean, we, we thought music could change the world completely. And I still think that, but you've got to get everybody doing it. But then again... There's a blowback, though. Yeah, and there are people doing music that are like hate-filled now, right. and um, really hate-filled. Well, think about the, the energy behind music. I mean, uh, there's a lot of young people, they go through a phase where they like heavy metal, for instance. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an adolescent kind of music. It's full of the t testosterone, full of all the hormones, full of all the, it's just <clears throat> And some people, um, they don't talk about growing. Some people don't grow. Out of that? Out of that. That's what they identify with. Um, Just like the guy that was a jock in high school, and that was... Oh, the, that was when he, know, his coming of his, age That's, that's when everything was the best it could possibly be. Mm -hmm. And everything was and like... And he hangs on to it? Uh, and people hang on to things. Yeah. People listen to the same music they listened to when they were a kid. Over well, and over I'm again. telling you, it's because they, they were coming of age at that time. Well, the music that was around that they listened to then, it's like means everything because they were growing up. And, and they were becoming who they became. It shows you how powerful it is, but it's also, you know, talk about being in a prison. If you don't break out of that best mm. time of your life... You're stuck. 
You're stuck. Yeah. And a lot, but a lot of people yeah. are stuck. I mean, to yeah. think think about top forty radio or whatever passes for. I mean, I can't stand handle listening to that dreck. So and yet. The dreck, yeah. I'd like to have the sales of some of that dreck. Oh, me too. But you, I, I could never compromise like that. But the thing is, you've had you have had sales in the past. When Grown Ups came out, I remember you went back up on the charts for a bit, right? I don't know if I went on the charts. I made a little money because it was in a movie. Okay, so did they pay like one McKe one up. license for it? Hmm? They they so did the producers of the movie? They paid a lot. They had to pay to license your song. I guess so, yeah. And then you get a cut of that. I got a cut of that, but I didn't open. I didn't own the copyrights at that point. I got the copyrights oh, back later. Oh, okay. So. Um, well, the whole thing with rights and artists and how they've been taken advantage of over the all. years and it's, what percentage they get based upon producer credit, writing credit, lyric credit. It's so complicated. And then, then the, the artists get the, the, pay, the, the contract they're supposed to sign and they can't understand that language. It's so complicated. It's all this boilerplate stuff, but it's all critical to you getting ripped off later, right? Yeah, I just signed whatever I sign. Do you have an agent or a manager or no, anybody? No, I wish I did. Uh, yeah, I don't understand things. I've got songs with ASCAP, but I, they said I'm not making money from certain songs because I haven't done this or that. And I just found someone that's going to help me do this or that. Well, good. Meaning how You'll get to compensated for some of your compensated songs. Compensated for, yeah, and, and all these people put my songs up on um, YouTube. <laughs> Like me, yeah. Well, but that was actually, I was in the band. Video. Yeah, yeah, that's I mean, okay. Yeah. But my songs that are on albums and stuff, and, um, and are they getting money from that? No, no you can't monetize on YouTube if you put up something that you don't have the rights to. Mm, okay. So they're not making money. And mm, there no. is an argument to be made that if somebody gets introduced to when things go wrong and wants to buy the, you know, the Chartbusters original album if it's available, mm -hmm. then... You know, so yeah, it's a service. It's, so it's hard. I mean, think about Spotify. I, I know artists that hate Spotify because they compensate so poorly. Oh, yeah, they do. I and yet it. I've been exposed to so much music through Spotify because it's like, you well, if you like this. Find it for yourself. Right. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's um, that's kind of how I felt about when was it NAFTA? Not NAFTA. That thing. Oh, that oh Napster. Napster. Right. I thought, well, I'm not going to complain about this because at least they're playing my music. Right. And I wasn't making anything anyway right. from the music then. But now I do have another album that just came out in December. Now, are you using SoundCloud or Bandcamp? Or? I, I use DistroKid. They actually press the CD and um, then they put it on all the digital. For playing, uh, right. Mm -hmm. So they and do all that the, for you. I, so I, have, I just made a few. CDs. You know. Because actually I wanted to buy one. You said you were oh, out or you had one copy left. I was going to bring one. No, no, no. That was the, that was in 19, in 2019, another album came out of Robin Lane and the Chartbusters. It was a co compilation. Oh, okay. It's on Amazon. Oh, you don't well, like I don't, Amazon? I will not use okay. Amazon other than the My web services. Yeah. yeah, that's too bad. Well, I mean, okay, so the... There's probably another place to buy it. I just don't know where it is right okay. now. I'll, I'll let you know. Well, I mean, eventually I'll... Find a way it's to a go. compilation of all of the songs we ever released. So well, you, I only thought you only had two three albums. Three CDs. And I had two albums and an EP, two EPs. Okay. And then a CD and another CD. Well, um, peace of mind was after the Warner Brothers. Well, years. that yeah, they didn't You're put anything count. on from them. Oh, okay. they did Little Bird. Okay. Because that was a fine album, I thought. My band wanted that on. Oh, you did? Yeah, I love that oh, album. Thank you. Yeah. I was going to call it Please Like Me. Yeah, I remember you telling okay. me that. And with that face on it, on the cover. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> the little girl. Uh, Sally Field was a neighbor, so it, it ha just happened to, you know, he liked me, he really liked me. Please so like the, me. And then one of the things you were talking about is how you um, writing is a lonely business. Mm -hmm. So a writer has to uh, observe what's around them mm -hmm. and observe what's within them. Well, depending on what they write. Yeah. Depending upon what the, they write. And so it is helpful to go out, let's say, if you want to listen to dialogue and hear how people really talk. <laughs> um, or maybe experience some life so you have something to write about. But the actual writing has to, by necessity, you need to be kind of alone with your thoughts. Now, if you can tune everybody out, you can type any, you can write anywhere. But most people need to have. Well, I think maybe that's why I just shy away from it. I like doing it, but I never have enough time. But you know, speaking of time, we have five minutes left. Would you mm -hmm. Would you like to play a song? You can play that later. I'd rather talk to you. 
Well, that's awesome. Well, yeah, no, well, no, this what? is great. I just wanted to how, offer you. How many minutes do we have left? Well, we have five minutes of the interview. Okay. But then we can film a, you singing a song later, and we can cut that and, and put that out as its own separate piece, and I'll send it to you, and you can share it. Okay. Well, so it's all good. Oh, it's all good. Um, but you, so you, okay, so you went back, you went to L.A., because you had gone out to L.A., you, blah, 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 you're, you met, you met your son that you had long lost son. You mm -hmm. came back here, you lived your life here for a while. Mm -hmm. Then there was kind of an emergency the song in LA. Sings, you know, the Songbird Sings, my nonprofit. Right. I was doing a lot of work with that, like with. And you're um, still doing Songbird Sings, yeah, right? Yeah, still doing Songbird Sings, although I haven't done it in a while because I, you know, the. COVID so that's going into jails still, or, or into uh, incarcerated I've women, gone or is that is. Help incarcerated women write songs. No, they're my favorite group in a way. Um, and you had another group before that, though, of women that you were teaching to write that wasn't yeah, necessarily... Yeah, I got an album out of the, some of their songs. Um, because there's that song with Jerry Higgins that I liked yeah, about the Iraq Price. War. Oh, well, but oh, no, stop, um, what is it? Stop that shit. Yeah. Uh, oh, shit like that yeah, pisses shit like that. me off. pisses me off. I loved that song. Oh my God, that is so good and it's so true. It's a powerful tune. And then one of my friends who's a Republican, and I was playing it, and he goes like, why would you write a song like that? Can you imagine? Well, why did uh, Neil Young write Ohio? I mean, give me a break, right? Yeah, exactly. But why did your friend Stephen Stills write For What It's Worth? Yeah. And you were hanging out with him when that was going on. Yeah. That was an interesting story. Yeah. You want to tell our viewers about no. that real quick? Okay. They didn't know. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. He wrote it in front of a whole bunch of us. Because yeah, you were hanging out watching what was going on with the riots? Well, no, or... I invited them to come after the Whiskey Go Go out to my friend Terry Sachin's ranch in Topanga Canyon, and they came. And so they were talking about what had happened oh, on okay. the Sunset Strip. Okay. And he just picked up a guitar and started playing that riff. And then it was on the radio like a day later. No, they recorded it a day later, but then it was on the radio. So Does that well, ever I, happen anymore? I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, that's Because we have a 24 hour news cycle now, but that was back then. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Things are so fast yeah. now. For that to happen that fast, that's amazing. Well, they were kind of popular then, too, in L.A., you know, right. at that point. Buffalo Springfield, yeah. Right. So what's your favorite band right now that you're listening to that you just discovered? Anything that totally blows your well, mind? I don't just go and listen to a band. I love Beck, like I said. Right. Um, and I've rediscovered in the best way, um, what's his name? Oh, 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 oh. oh uh, Cohen. No. no. Um, oh, I like Waits. him, too. Tom no. Waits. Uh, uh-uh, the guy that started, Captain Beefheart. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I, I gave away Trout Mask Replica because I hated that album so much. You hate I Captain played it, Beefheart? I played it once, and Do I thought know? it was noise, and it's like, I can't You're gonna listen to this. You're going to change your mind, right? Oh, I've actually, I've listened to Captain Beefheart since then, and I've liked some of it. Oh, my God. But some of it grates on me, like, it's like no, fingers on, it's just grates on me, I'm sorry. Wing, wing deal fingerling, this guitar player. It just sounds so cacophonous at times, and his voice That's was harsh. That's the deal. You need the little dissonance. Well, I life. like deconstructing, but then I like it to come back into something, and it just seemed to, to stay deconstructed. Well, your mind needs to expand. Well, I don't disagree with that. That's why you know I'm still. <laughs> I'll oh, give oh, Captain Beefheart another listen. I, I don't. I don't know. I listen to really myself. <laughs> Well, and, and do you how do you criticize yourself? When you hear yourself, do you go, oh, man. Oh, I yeah, no. Yeah. Most of the time, I'm criticizing myself. If I see myself singing. Do you, you not know, like the way I, you look, or is it something where I, I don't get that? I don't like the way I look, or else I'm not, you know. You, I'm having trouble with my voice. It doesn't go as high as it used to. That's what happens. I yeah. Know. So it's hard to sing some songs, and uh, you start in a different register now, or, or a different key, or anything. No, or not really. You just don't reach for the higher notes. Well, maybe I don't do those songs, or I'll tr tune a guitar down, right? You know, tune the strings down. Um, Have you found though that your um, maybe inflection or the nuances that you bring to your singing are more sophisticated than they used to be? Oh yeah, I know how. To yeah. You don't have to I mean, when I was in energy. my band, I wasn't really singing. I was just kind of like anti-singing. But your I was songs, trying to make a point. But your songs, your singing is lovely. That's amazing that you think that, because one guy in Denver, in a radio station, wouldn't play our music because he said, um, I sounded like a drowning trout. Well, yeah, but a really, really, really delightful drowning trout, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> so my manager, being the Sicilian he is, sent him a, um, a dead fish in the mail, third oh class. 
Sicilian. Right. And I was like, you know, I'm That's surprised why you it wasn't his anymore. head. So um, we got So we're oh. done. Our five minutes are up. Oh, bye. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, well, pull yourself together. And all right. Thank bye. you for joining us. This has been a really odd interview. We've gone all over the place, but I've enjoyed visiting with Robin. I hope that you've enjoyed visiting with me, visiting with Robin. And check out her music, Robin Lane. Um, Songbird Sings, The Chart Busters. I've got a website, The Robin Lane. The Robin Lane. On my website, you can okay. buy the album, Facebook. There we I'm go. Around. Very good. Thank you, Robin. And thank okay. you. Take care.